This is Teresa Matsura, and you're listening to Uncanny Japan. Let's pretend you want to become a samurai, or a ninja for that matter. Or maybe an acupuncturist, or an herbalist. Maybe you want to become a master of fusui, feng shui, or even the tea ceremony. Or really dig into esoteric Buddhism. Well, whichever path you choose, there is a lot you need to study and decades of training you need to do, and you'll probably have to learn a little Japanese along the way. But if it's your dream, I think I can help you with one thing. Let me tell you about a concept that you'll need to be familiar with. The five elements. Some questions you might be asking yourself right now. What are these five elements you speak of? What do they do? And if I personally were one of them, which element would I be? Well, stay right there, and I'll get to all of that in just a second. Would you like to explore the stranger, more obscure corners of Japanese culture? Dig a little deeper into superstitions, curious customs, and all those mysterious creatures that inhabit the land? If so, then this is the podcast for you. Uncanny Japan is where I, author Teresa Matsura, share all the fascinating tidbits I unearth while doing research for my writing. From the bizarre to the ghastly, and everything in between. I hope you enjoy the show. Hey, hey, how are you? I hope you're well. A quick mention of my upcoming book, The Book of Japanese Folklore, an encyclopedia of the spirits, monsters, and yokai of Japanese myth. And a reminder that if you pre-ordered it, email me at thebookofjapanesefolklore at gmail.com with a screenshot of that or the name of the bookstore you ordered it from, and I'll send you a recording of my retelling of The Wife Who Didn't Eat, called Kuwazu Nyobo in Japanese. Speaking of the Book of Japanese Folklore, it's been decided by the powers that be that I'm also going to read it for the audio version, which I'm doing right now, actually. So, a pre-ordered audiobook, too, gets you the hour-long creepy folk tale. The Book of Japanese Folklore, all spelled out, at gmail.com. Okay, on to elements. Pop quiz. What are the five elements? Are they earth, water, fire, metal, or gold, and wood? Or are they earth, water, fire, air, or wind, and void? The answer? Why not both? Yes, both. First, let's try to make this not so confusing. There are actually two different groupings of five elements, and they are a little bit different. There's the gogyo and the godai. Gogyo is written with the character five and the kanji for to go, iku. I see it translated into English as five phases or five agents, and then again elsewhere as five moving states. The thought here is the five moving things are the planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Mercury, Mars, and Venus, because each planet is connected to one of the elements, and they move, as do the elements, but more on that in a second. Meanwhile. Godai reads, five big. A little simpler. As always, there's some overlap and all that, but here are the basics. Let's start with the Gogyo, because it reached Japan first, having come from China somewhere between the 5th and the 7th centuries. Originally from Taoism, these five elements are earth, water, fire, metal, sometimes translated as gold, and wood. In Chinese, together they are called the Five Elements Theory, or Wu Jing in Chinese. 
This is a philosophy that believes in the relationships and interdependence between all things. One element isn't better or stronger than any of the others. Everything is equal, but there's a creation order and a destruction order, which you'll see represented by a pentagram, one of the elements on each of the points. Arrows are usually drawn to designate what destroys what and what creates what. There are all kinds of relationships between the five elements. A pentagram, by the way, is called a gobose in Japanese. Now that we're talking about pentagrams, have you ever heard of Abe no Seime? I'm going to do an episode on him soon, but for now just know that he was an incredibly powerful onmyoji who practiced onmyodo. Think high magic and divination although that's a very simplified definition. Anyway, for the study and practice of Omyodo, the Gogyo was very important. You'll see the pentagram as a symbol of both Abe no Seime and the practice of Omyodo, sometimes called the way of yin and yang. Some say Abe no Seime invented the pentagram independently here in Japan. Others say he borrowed it from Tantric or Esoteric Buddhism or Taoism. However it happened, it was used and is still used as a lucky charm or talisman. You'll find the pentagram all around the Seimei Shrine in Kyoto, where you can buy your own Ofuda with one on it. Gogyo is also used in the practice of Kampo, also called Kampoyaku, herbal medicines, acupuncture, and fu sui, feng shui, the knowledge and art of placing things or building things in certain areas to facilitate the flow of qi energy and bring about harmony and good luck. All of these ancient traditions, still around today by the way, are based on the theory of the five elements, gogyo. So what's this second godai then? Well, the second five-element cosmology also came to Japan from China. But where Gogyo feels very Taoist, Godai's roots are mixed in esoteric Buddhism, though not of Tibetan origins, but from Indian texts. It then moved through China and eventually reached Japan. A monk named Kukai was studying this mystical Buddhism in China in the early 800s and ended up bringing it back to Japan and calling it Shingon. The Godai was very likely part of the teachings he received, and he taught it later, even adding a sixth element, consciousness, that unites all the others. But we won't get into that. Let's stick to five. First, of these five Godai elements, the first three are the same as the Gogyo, earth, called Chi, water, Sui, and fire, Ka. Then, instead of metal and wood, there is wind or air called fu, and space, void, or sky called ku, also translated as emptiness and no self, the godai. Where the gogyo are all interconnected, often seen on a pentagram, and also related to yin and yang, which is always moving, wood feeds fire, fire makes earth, think of the ash from a burned tree, Earth bears metal, think metals mined from the earth, etc. Godai don't have that entanglement, so to speak. It's a static philosophy, with the first four, earth, water, fire, wind, being building blocks of all states, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Ku, or void, or sky, represents everything that is beyond our comprehension, but also creation itself. Some martial arts think of the godai, also called go lin or five rings, something like earth symbolizing natural power, water means fluidity and change, fire is passion, wind is freedom and growth, and ku is the no-self, or perfect peace. I'm sure all the martial artists out there know about the Book of Five Rings, written by the great samurai Miyamoto Musashi in 1645. Those five rings are the five elements, of course. 
you'll find both versions of the five elements all over martial arts. In Kendo, there's a gogyo no kata, or gogyo form. The five elements are extremely important in ninjutsu, both of them, but also in Aikido and all sorts of kung fu styles. Here's another place you might have run into the five elements, specifically the godai. Have you ever been to a Buddhist temple or graveyard and seen a small five-tiered stone pagoda consisting of different shapes all stacked up? That's called a godinto, or five-ringed tower. The five different shapes represent each of the elements in order. The very bottom is a cube for earth, on top of that a sphere for water, next up is a pyramid for fire, then a crescent-looking shape for air or wind, and on the very top, a somewhat peach or jewel-looking shape, indicating the void. The top two tiers in Japan resemble a lotus blossom sometimes, too. Also in Japanese cemeteries, you'll find long, thin pieces of wood with fancy writing on them. Japanese and Sanskrit. These are called sotoba, and they have the special new name of the deceased person written on them, as well as other things like prayers. Even though they are long, thin strips, the outline of their shape has been cut to represent the same shapes as the gorinto. Godai in the wild again. And finally, I talked about Buddhism and Taoism a lot, but Shinto has also been influenced by the five elements. Which makes sense when you remember that way back in the day, it was okay to practice Shinto and Buddhism side by side. So you'll find a neat fusion of practices if you look closely. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the answer to the question that keeps you up at night. If I were an element, what element would I be? So just to review, on Uncanny Japan, I've talked about which animal zodiac sign are you, episode 67, and which lucky god are you, episode 116, and which Buddhist icon are you, episode 107. But since it's the beginning of the year, and it's always fun to know yourself a little better, let's find out what element you are. And these will be the gogyo, or wujing, so no metal or void. If the year of your birth ends in 8 or 9, like 1978 or 1979, or 1988 or 1989, you get the picture, you are Earth. And wow, you're enormous, floating in the vastness of space. You are home. You contain everything we puny humans need to exist. We depend entirely on you. So it's no wonder Earth people are thoughtful, deep-thinking, and peace-loving. The immensity of your spirit allows you to remain calm in adverse situations. You're dependable. You also enjoy helping others. It's just in your earthy nature. You would, though, appreciate a little notice and gratitude for your wonderfulness, though. A little respect, even. You don't like to be taken advantage of. If the year you were born ends in six or seven, you are fire. You might imagine yourself as a majestic bonfire at night on a vast shore. There, dancing wild with untamed energy, a primal beauty you are, captivating and intense. It's no surprise that fire people have bold spirits and adventurous natures. Once you become excited about something, you're highly motivated and very passionate about whatever it is. Nothing can stand in your way. You just kind of blaze on through. You like to have fun, but you also like others to have fun too. You're spontaneous and hardworking, but be careful because you get bored of things and people easily. Next, if your birth year ends in two or three, you are water. Imagine you're the enormous ocean stretching from horizon to horizon. On top, you're all rippling waves and splashes, but underneath, you're incredibly deep and full of mysteries and weird fish. 
It's only natural, then, that water types are complex introverts who like to be alone. You're perceptive and cerebral and value the time you have to just quietly contemplate and ponder and create. A nice rainy day snuggled up on the couch, reading all by yourself and reflecting on life, sounds perfect to you. But be careful not to isolate too much, lest you become a little passive and selfish. If the year you were born ends in zero or one, then you are metal. Think of all the multitudes of metals found deep inside the earth. Iron, copper, gold, silver, lead, titanium, to name a few. All these embody varying degrees of strength and resilience. Sleek or rugged, you're hard and cool to the touch, but not in a bad way. Metal types are organized and disciplined and can accomplish whatever needs to be done. You're also modest and economical and don't need to collect a lot of stuff around you. Middle personalities are faithful friends as well. However, you might have a problem letting things go, though, and I'm not talking about physical items either, but pity the fool who is disloyal or betrays your trust. And finally, if the year you were born ends in four or five, you are wood. Imagine a great old-growth tree in a forest, centuries old. This is you. You're patient, understanding, wise, and compassionate. Since you are part of a forest with your deep roots all interconnected with your other tree friends and tree family roots, this shows that you are very good at communicating. You're sociable. And quite frankly, you are very interested in growing and expanding as a person. Some might call you a visionary. Be careful not to get too obsessed with your own forward progress, though. You don't want to disrespect or overshadow those around you. And there you have it for the two groups of five elements, the Gogyo and the Godai. If you want to learn more, there's a great website called Elemental Japan by author, scholar, and frequent Japan resident Jan Williams. I found her site extremely informative. Before I go, I'd like to mention my refurbished website. The man who can do all things, Richard, just gave my personal, Teresa Matsura, site a swanky revamping. I'm still working on some of the pages, so that's on me, not him. But there is a link for those who pre-ordered the Book of Japanese Folklore to get the audio story, The Wife Who Didn't Eat, as well as links to our shop where you can buy some awesome uncanny Japan goodies, shirts, stickers, magnets, mugs, notebooks, yoga mats, You name it. Not only the Uncanny Japan awesome logo that was made by Travis Pixels, go check him out, incredible artist, but also I'm starting to put up some of my weirdo postcard designs I do for patrons. So there's that. And if you can, please consider becoming a patron. The podcast is free to listen to, but it's not free to make. For as little as $5 a month, there's already over 100 bedtime stories folk tales and stories for patrons only that I've translated and read, as well as loads of binaural sounds, recipes, a weekly blog post about all manner of things, neat language stuff I discover, odd fads going on, and my perplexing relationship with my crow-hating neighbor. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, patrons, for supporting. I love you. And I will talk to you again in two weeks. You've reached the end of the show, and I just want you to know how much we appreciate you listening and supporting us. Any subscribing, reviewing, and gushing to your friends, family, even random strangers, really does help keep us going. If you have the means and you want to help a little more and get a little more, we are making extra content over on Patreon, all for only $5 a month. Or, if you like to read horror, you might be interested in my Bram Stoker-nominated short story collection, The Carp-Faced Boy and Other Tales. Hontoni arigato gozaimasu. Thank you again, and I'll talk to you real soon.